Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to Target Focus Life. 2021 is nearing an end and I have had such a blast launching this brand new channel and creating all sorts of content, but specifically the shotgun reviews and shotgun showdowns. I've done like 15 reviews and six showdowns and we're just getting started. There's so much more coming in 2022, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to share with you my best picks of 2021. Let's go. <laughs> So in 2021, I primarily focused my shotgun reviews and showdowns on semi-auto shotguns and specifically waterfowl shotguns. There were a few sub gauges and there were a few outliers that aren't specifically waterfowl shotguns, but most of them were. So I'm going to share with you my top picks. So here's the categories that we're going to look at in this video. We're going to have best shotgun over a thousand dollars and we're going to have a gas and inertia pick. Then we're gonna have best semi-auto shotgun under $1,000. Again, we'll have a gas and inertia pick. Then we're gonna look at best semi-auto shotgun for the money or best bang for the buck, as well as best looking shotgun. Then we'll take a look at some of the fastest shotguns that I reviewed this year. Let's go. First category we're gonna take a look at is best semi-auto over $1,000. You wanna spend some cash get yourself a shotgun that's more than $1,000. Here's my top picks out of the guns that I reviewed. First, looking at the gas category, the Browning Maxxis II. This was a brand new shotgun announced by Browning this year. The Maxxis I, the original version, I didn't care for it, but I got my hands on the Maxxis II. So many things to like about this shotgun. Love the ergonomics, the look, the feel, the rubber over moldings, just feels great in your hands at 7.2 pounds. It's a fairly light shotgun for a 12 gauge, three and a half inch by the way, with light recoil. So that is pretty cool, this gas driven shotgun. Now you're looking at the Wicked Wing Edition here in my hands, which is a darn good looking shotgun I might add, and you're gonna pay for it. MSRP is more than $2,000, just above $2,000, but as with most MSRPs, you can find them cheaper at retailers like my favorite sporting good retailer, Reed's. Now, if you just want the plain camo version, that comes in around $18.99 MSRP. So not the cheapest shotgun out there, but a great looking shotgun with great ergonomics, a lot to love about it. If you wanna see my full review on any of the shotguns I'm gonna be talking about in this video, we're gonna put them in the description, in the card. Make sure you check those out. For my inertia pick, I have to go with the Benelli Super Black Eagle 3. I really enjoyed shooting this shotgun. Benelli recently released, this year, a three inch version of the Super Black Eagle 3, which was only available in three and a half inch prior to this three inch version. So the one you're looking at is the three inch version. I have not reviewed it. What you have seen in my reviews, if you watched my Super Black Eagle 3 review, was this 12 gauge shotgun here. Now, one of the things that surprised me about the Super Black Eagle 3 is just how well it cycles a range of shells. This is a three and a half inch gun. As you all know, I'm not a huge fan of three and a half inch. That's why I'm super stoked. I got the three inch Super Black Eagle 3 now. It's lighter, it's gonna shoot faster, and I don't shoot three and a half inch shells at all, and it's gonna be less expensive. That's a huge feature right there. MSRP of the Super Black Eagle 3 is $19.99, or the three and a half inch version. But if you drop down to the three inch version, it's $17.99. So the Super Black Eagle 3, very reliable, shooting a wide range of shells, super easy to break down, not many moving pieces, great gun. If you're looking for an inertia driven gun, this is my top pick out of the guns I reviewed this year. Now for the next category, we're gonna look at best semi-auto shotgun under $1,000. If you don't wanna just throw a bunch of money out there for your next semi-auto shotgun, what are some guns you can consider that are less than $1,000? Again, kicking things off with my choice for gas-operated shotgun, I'm gonna go with the Winchester SX4. Winchester SX4 is a phenomenal gun. I've had a lot of experience with it. Shot hundreds of thousands of rounds. It's a fast shooter, light recoil, well-balanced, great ergonomics. The MSRP is $829. Just a fantastic gun for the money. Just a great overall gun. Now, taking a look at the Inertia gun, I don't have nearly as much experience with this. Actually, I never shot it until this year, but I was quite blown away with this shotgun. It is the Franke Affinity 
3. Really enjoyed shooting this shotgun. This is in the same ballpark coming in at $849, so just slightly more expensive, but it's an inertia operated gun, very simple to take apart. The one we're looking at here is the Elite Waterfowl, I believe they call it, and it is quite a bit more expensive. MSRP is around $1249, but just the regular camo version of this gun is right around 950 bucks MSRP. Things to love about this gun, it's even lighter than the SX4, around six pounds, 14 ounces, couple ounces lighter, and the Franke's come with a seven year warranty, which I've never had to use their warranty service, so I don't know how they stand behind it, but seven year warranty on a shotgun, pretty darn cool. Really enjoyed shooting this shotgun, so if you prefer inertia and you wanna spend less than a thousand, here's my top pick. Oh, by the way, before I put this down, I did do a shotgun showdown between the SX4 and the Franke Affinity 3, but they were the 20 gauge compact versions and I let my son decide which one to go for. So I'm just gonna throw it out there. This is not an official category of this awards show, but my son picked the Franke Affinity 3 over the SX4 for his primary gun. Now, I'd love to give my opinion. I'd love to hear what you would like to see. Would you like to see a Franke Affinity 3 versus the SX4 shotgun showdown? Put it in the comments down below. Next category we're gonna take a look at is best bang for the buck. Here I'm looking at shotguns that I just think are value packed, that are great shotguns for the money. Now, you can get really cheap shotguns, but they're not enjoyable to shoot, so when I look at best bang for the buck, I'm like, how can you get the most gun for the money? Again, I'm gonna pick a gas version and an inertia driven option. Gas gun, here we go. Back to the SX4. Well, I've already spoke about this shotgun. So many things to like. MSRP 829 for the black synthetic version anyways. Good ergonomics, good controls, light recoil, fast shooting shotgun, very reliable. What's not to like? Now. This one might surprise you a little bit. We have to pick an inertia shotgun. And since we're talking best bang for the buck, I'm not just going to the high-end shotguns. I did shoot some more value-driven inertia guns this year. And this one surprised me, actually. It is the Weatherby Element. I didn't know what to expect when shooting this shotgun. From the ergonomics to reliability, just an overall great shotgun. And the black synthetic version of this According to Weatherby's website, I just had to go back and double check because I was so surprised. $599. $599 for an inertia driven shotgun. I'm gonna definitely have to get this out, put more rounds through it because it just seems like how could an inertia driven shotgun be that cheap? But from getting hands on and doing the review, make sure you check that out. Great gun for the money. This one surprised me. You know, I thought about what other categories could we make? Maybe you got suggestions, you can put them in the comments below, but I thought, how about just overall good looking shotguns? Like what is the prettiest semi-auto shotgun I shot this year? There she is. It is the Benelli Ethos Sport. I saw this gun in Reed's and it was just calling my name. Like it was on the shelf and I felt like I just heard Steven. It sounded better in my head. But this shotgun from the wood to the receiver, the two tone colors to the angles, the ergonomics, the carbon fiber rib, just it is a pretty shotgun. This one was a 28 gauge. There's other ones out there that are engraved and they have different looks, just a pretty shotgun. I'd like to get a couple more, but these guns are not cheap either. With the MSRP of $22.69, this one will set you back a little bit. But if you're one of those people that don't just want a shotgun because it works, because it can kill animals, because it can kill clays, but is also dang good looking, because I mean, half of it is just about how you look while you do it, right? Agree or disagree? I know some of you are like, Strong disagree, put it in the comments down below. That's okay, there's no right or wrong. Real pretty shotgun. Last category that we're gonna take a look at is the fastest shotguns that I reviewed this year. Starting with third place, the third fastest shotgun that I shot this year, the Browning A5, which is also just one of my favorite guns as far as looks. I don't know, maybe it's just cause it's so different. The humpback, love the look. The Wicked Wing Edition is beautiful. I was able to get on target. It felt really natural. 
I shot this with a time of 1.14. Baby, that was fast. The second fastest shotgun I shot this year was actually a tie. The Beretta A400 Extreme Plus. This is a three and a half inch shotgun gas operated, a 1.12 at three clays. Now I did review this one earlier on in the year. My times only got faster as time went on but I was really impressed on how quick I could get on target, how fast I could pull the trigger. Of the guns I reviewed, this is one of my favorite guns, over $1,000. In fact, I ran it against the Maxxis 2 in a shotgun showdown. Make sure you check that video out. So many great things to love about this gun. Between the recoil, the fast shooting, one of my faves for sure. The A400 tied with another gun, it's the Beretta Ultima. The A300 Ultima, which is a gun that I was super excited to see this year. It had so many improvements over the Outlander, which I also reviewed this year, with the controls being one of the big improvements as well as the stock. Unfortunately, I've had some trigger issues with this Ultima since then. And so if you're looking at an Ultima, make sure you watch my videos about the trigger before you buy. One, one, two. And the fastest shotgun that I shot this year. Don't be surprised, but it was the Winchester SX4. Not this gun, actually, specifically. My TFL exhibition gun. I brought this out, and before you say, well, he modified the gun. No, it's really not modified other than the appearance. Deadeye Liquid Graphics did that. I got the extended magazine tube from Carlson's choke tube. Otherwise, this is a completely stock gun. Now, in all fairness, I spent the most amount of time to get the fastest score on this gun because this is what I use in live exhibitions, which I'm open to change. I would look at different guns. In fact, I considered the Beretta Ultima, but unfortunately you can't add a magazine tube extension. So that's out. One other modification, I forgot to mention, it's got a Falcon Strike recoil pad, just to give me the slight edge to shoot even faster. I ended up shooting this shotgun a 1.05, my fastest score of the year. Now I hope to break that next year. Check it out. That might be it, boy. 1.05. Now, I've got a ton of overwhelming feedback from viewers like you saying how much you enjoy the reviews. I appreciate the feedback. I've got a lot of suggestions on what guns you would like to see me review. I've had a lot of people say over-unders is what they would like to see, so I'm gearing up, getting ready to do some of those. Pump shotguns, those are also on the list and many more other semi-autos. But it can be a little bit challenging because there's so many different guns with many different variations. If you start to look at chamber size, you could review the three inch version or the three and a half inch version. If you start to look at gauge, certain guns may have a 12 gauge, a 20 gauge, some have 28s, 410s, a lot of different combinations. I hope to get to all of them. I wanna have the widest library of shotgun reviews that you can rely on to make informed decisions. So more reviews are coming next year. In fact, I'll be making a video real shortly coming out in the next couple weeks talking about the reviews we plan to do next year. And in that video, I'm gonna ask for your comments on what shotguns you would like to see me review. You can put them down below in this video, but I specifically wanna see them in the next video. I'm gonna rely heavily on that to build my content calendar for next year. But that's it for right now, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only gonna hit those shots that you're laser focused on. So live target focused. See ya.